Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. We are here on this Thursday morning, and we are taking a couple steps forward in our relationship with God. Not running a marathon, not sprinting this morning, just intentionally taking steps forward. So, so glad you're here as we study the book of Matthew. And today is a very important passage in Matthew. Up to this point, uh, we, we keep talking about the theme of Matthew is fulfillment that Jesus is the Messiah because he's fulfilling all the prophecies about the coming Messiah. Uh, But there's been no uh, explicit, very little explicit use of the word Messiah. Uh, Jesus is doing the things that the Messiah does. Uh, People are starting to talk. And now Jesus has a conversation with his disciples and asks them just a very important question. Who am I? So let's read that here uh, because it tells us a lot that we need to know. And really for Matthew brings... um, just kind of, it's not the highlight of, or it's not the, the, uh, the climax of Matthew. The, the resurrection is the climax of, of, of Matthew. Uh, but this is an important key. The, the book takes a, or the gospel account takes a turn at this point because it's much more specific uh, that Jesus is the Messiah. Most people have already formed their conclusion based on the prophecies and all of that that Matthew's laid out up to this point, but it's that, that moment of clarity. So let's check it out. It says this, um, In verse 13 of Matthew 16, it says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? So who do do people say? It's a great question because the disciples are, as Jesus is talking, as Jesus is healing, as he is busy doing ministry and performing miracles, what are the disciples doing? They're there, uh, but they have much more interaction with the crowd. (laughs) They're probably walking around, they're hearing things, they're having side conversations, they're just present in this. They would have been some of the best people to ask this question, who do people say that I am? So this is the response, they said, well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. So the general sense is that Jesus is a prophet. Uh, he, he's from God, he's speaking on behalf of God, he has powers, Uh, He performs miracles like many prophets uh, that they would have been familiar with, Elijah, uh, Elisha. uh, They're they're making those connections. But we know, we know that Jesus is more than a prophet. Um, The people aren't quite sure about it yet. So then Jesus asks, okay, that's great. That's what they think. But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. What he's meaning is that I, I'm not going around calling myself Messiah. I'm not introducing myself, hi, my name is Jesus, the Messiah. He doesn't have business cards printed up. He's not using that language. So he's saying, God has revealed that to you. God has revealed that through, to you through what you see me doing, uh, through the scripture passage that I'm sharing. He's connecting prophecy. He's, he's making all these connections. You made that conclusion. God has revealed that to, to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now, I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. So before the Dwayne the Rock Johnson, uh, we had Peter the Rock, Peter. Anyways, Uh, Simon the Rock Peter. Uh, It was funnier in my head when I did it. Anyways, we'll just move on here. Sometimes humor is good at 6 a.m. Sometimes it's not. Um, Today, it's not. Uh, Peter is declared as the rock. He says, and I will will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So there's lots of discussion about this passage. What does this exactly mean with, with Peter? You know, he's the rock. Uh, he's able to, you know, make decisions. Is he, uh, does this set up for, you know, the structure of the Roman Catholic Church has, you know, one bishop overseeing the other bishops? Who's the Pope? Does that mean Peter was the first Pope? There's lots of discussion and there's, you know, we're not going to get into that there. What's intended here is that Peter is the presumed leader moving forward. Um, that he gives him some specific instructions. He he calls him the rock, and on this rock, he's gonna build his church. Now, the word church here that he's using is ecclesia, which means a gathering. So it's not a formal building. It's a gathering of believers, and this gathering of believers is gonna be 
Peter's going to be the center of this as it starts off, and that's what we see in the book of Acts. We see Peter that's kind of the spokesperson. He's the one there on the day of Pentecost, out there preaching boldly. He's central in the church in Jerusalem. He's, you know, a very central, important figure of the disciples uh, as the church grows and explodes. So uh, not only do we see this statement, we see it actually playing out a little bit later. The point that I want to make here, though, is even in this moment, though, is, is Jesus is giving Peter this, this responsibility. He's uh, telling him what's going to be happening a bit in the future. Uh, Peter still doesn't fully understand what Messiah means. He says, you're, you're the Savior. You're the one. But Peter is living in this stream, uh, in this culture, where they believe the Messiah means to overthrow the government, that they're going to be a physical ruler here on earth. We know that Peter still doesn't get this because the very next conversation, it says this, then he sternly warned his disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious laws. He would be killed, but on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. So Matthew's not really good at uh, building suspense. Spoiler alert, right here in the middle of the book. He's like, Jesus is telling him he's going to Jerusalem, he's going to die, but on the third day he's going to rise again. He ruins the end of the story. He tells the disciples this very plainly. But Peter took him aside to reprimand him. <laughs> Peter got pretty confident pretty early. He's like, Peter, you're a rock. He's like, okay, Jesus, I got some advice for you, which is, is kind of silly, but this is what he does. Peter took him aside to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things from a merely human point of view, not God's. It's like this, Jesus, or Peter, you're right. I am the Messiah. You got that right. But you're looking at this from a human perspective. Uh, you think that Messiah means king, overthrowing the Romans, live here forever. That's not what it means. God's point of view is much bigger than this. That the savior that God's sending is not a savior from earthly rulers. It's from, the, it's from sin itself. It's to reestablish a relationship with God. I am going to Jerusalem. I am going to die. I will rise on the third day. So step aside, stand back, don't get in the way here, and watch and see what happens. From this moment of probably Peter's best moment in his life ever, I mean, think this is Peter the fisherman, and now here it is, this person who is the most famous person in all of Israel, who everywhere he goes, Jesus, everywhere he goes, gets throughout crowds, thousands, tens of thousands of people constantly surrounding him. And Jesus singled him out and said, I'm going to build my church on you. You are going to be a leader in this. To a couple moments later, get behind me, Satan. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a roller coaster of a ride in a very short period of time. But it just reminds us, just the belief that, that what's going on in the culture around them that their, the Jewish people, their view of Messiah was much different than the role that Jesus came to play. And that's what's going to lead to his death. That's what's gonna to lead to the religious leaders putting him to death, is that, under, is that misunderstanding of what God was actually doing when he talked about his promise. That promise went all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I will give you a land, I will give you a nation, and through you the whole world will be blessed. And that blessing is Jesus. That blessing is forgiveness. So we're here. We're still walking through Matthew, but it's getting more clear. And Jesus is being more explicit with his disciples what's going to happen. They're still not sure. They're still not getting it. They're not going to get it till after the resurrection. We have the privilege of being able to look at this account on the other side and look back at history and Maybe possibly think, oh, I would have gotten, I would have been, it would have been more clear, but it, it's hard to understand how deeply entrenched uh, the Jews of this time were into their particular view of Messiah. And even with the Messiah standing there in front of them, having a hard time interpreting Jesus's actions and attitudes and what he was doing through that lens. There's a lots of conflict and we're going to find more of it in the days ahead here in Matthew. Let's pray. God, we come to you today and we are just so so grateful, God, that your ways are way bigger than our ways. They got, humanly speaking, we, we shrink things down. We make it about the, 
the moment right here, but God, you were looking at redemptive history. You were looking about all of mankind. You were looking about all ages, all cultures. So God, forgive us for the times that we shrink you down, that we make you about us only in our particular situation. God, you are the God of humanity, not just of us, of me right here. God, I stand in awe of the fact that you love me as an individual, but I stand in awe of your huge plan for all of mankind. Help me to orient my life around that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day and look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.